Hey, what is going on guys? RVZ Stealth here, and in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the best champions for lower elo for this upcoming season. So the new rank season starts on December 6th, which is only a few days away. So if you guys are still like in bronze or silver and you want to climb out, then these champions are, in my opinion, the champions that you should look to play if you want to climb the fastest. They're pretty simple champions. They don't have a whole lot to them and they're also really strong right now in this meta. So with that being said guys, let's get into the video. So the way that I'm going to do this video or the way I'm going to format it is I'm going to give my number one pick for each role and then I'll also give two honorable mentions for each role. So starting off in the top lane here, my number one pick is Swain. So Swain is just one of the most simplistic top lane champions that you can probably play. He's got a very easy kit. His combo is very simple. He counters a lot of the meta top laners. He does great in like any melee matchup in the top lane, besides Yasuo. Yasuo is a champion that can do pretty well against Swain because he can dash through like his W and his Q and avoid a lot of his damage. But other than that, he can do well in like most other top lane matchups. He scales really well into the mid to late game as well. And he's got a very good mid game power spike. Your Rod and your Zhonya spike makes you pretty much unkillable and you can still deal a ton of damage. So if you are looking for a good like AP bruiser top laner, I would definitely definitely look to play Swain. So my two honorable mentions for top lane are going to be Yorick and Renekton. So I feel like Yorick is a much better pick in the lower elos than he is once you move up in the ranks. The main reasons are because Yorick can get kited pretty easily because he doesn't have a gap closer. So once you get up in the ranks and once people can kite really well, he isn't as useful as a champion. And also once you move up the ranks, people know how to deal with split pushing more. And Yorick is one of the better split pushing top laners. So in the lower elos, people really won't know how to deal with that and because York is like a really good 1v2 champion he's also a very good split pusher with his ultimate and like with his sheen procs he's a very hard champion for people to contain in the lower elos I think that if you can get ahead with York in the early game you can honestly solo carry a game just with your split push the enemy team is going to have to send like probably even three champions to try to kill you if you do get ahead in the early game Game, that's just how strong of a dueling champion he is. He also does a lot of unexpected damage. Whenever I play against York in the top lane, his ghouls just end up dealing so much. I try to duel this champion and then he just ends up killing me. The damage that he can deal with his ghouls is really crazy. And because like he's just a great split pushing champion and because his weaknesses aren't really exploited in the lower elos, I do think he is a pretty good pick. And then as for Renekton, right now Renekton is a really good early game champion and also he's a great counter to some of the most played top laners in lower elos being Yasuo and Riven. Yasuo and Riven are pretty much picked like every other game in bronze and silver so having a good counter to those champions in your champion pool is always a good idea. Renekton is also great right now with Courage of the Colossus, the shield that he can get from that just by using his point and click stun is very effective and it will allow you to win trades really easily in the laning phase. So I would definitely recommend picking this champion against a Yasuo or a Riven or if you just want to have like a really strong early game, I would take Ignite on him. I wouldn't really take Teleport on like someone that's got a really good early game like Renekton because if you can get that first blood on the enemy top laner, they're probably going to tilt pretty hard and you're probably just going to be able to kill them over and over again. So moving over to the jungle now, my number one pick for jungle is Shivana. So after Shivana got buffed, she went from being one of the crappiest junglers to being like a god tier jungler. She's really good at like most elos right now, but she's even better for bronze and silver in my opinion because she can get kited like pretty easily. Once people know how to kite, she isn't as effective, but people don't really kite as well in lower elo, so it just allows her to easily dive onto the back line and to like burst down the enemy squishy champions. She does have a load of damage while still being relatively tanky. You really only need like Blood Razor, Blade of the Ruin King on her. After that, you can go full tank and you can still deal so much damage with her. 
She also thrives in the new jungle because her clear speeds are honestly, I want to say they're the best for any jungler right now, maybe other than someone like a Vi or a Hecarim because she's got the AoE damage from her W and her E, which just allows her to clear out the Raptors and the Krugs very fast. The two RO mentions for jungle are going to be Ramus and Vi. So Ramus is kind of on this list similar to Renekton in the sense that he does really well against like Yasuo, Riven, Kha'Zix, Rengar, any of those dive champions that are being played right now or any champion that wants to dive onto your back line. He can go full tank or he can build like full armor against those AD champions and he can still deal so much damage with his passive. He's also a great Courage of the Colossus abuse user because he can easily proc that with his Q or his E. Courage is getting nerfed next patch, but I still think it is going to be very strong on these hard CC junglers and top laners, so you don't really have to worry too much about that. He's a very easy to play jungler and he does great against those AD champions that are being played right now. And then as for Vi, right now I think that Vi is the best overall jungler that you can probably play at any elo. She's great in the new jungle, her clear speeds are very good with her Q AoE damage and her E AoE damage. She's also kind of like a press R to win jungler. If you can just use your ult on like the enemy AD carry or mid laner in every single team fight, they're really not going to be able to do anything. Whenever I'm playing AD carry against a Vi, it just feels like you're so useless in a team fight because if you move into auto attack range, Vi can just press R on you and you're pretty much dead from there on out. So if you are looking for like an overall really good jungler right now, then I would pick up Vi. So starting it off in the mid lane now, my number one pick for mid is going to be Annie. So this really should be no surprise here. Annie is a great pick for the lower elos for multiple reasons. The first one is because she can CS very easily in the laning phase with the reset from her Q. Lower elo players usually tend to struggle with CSing in the laning phase. Most players will probably only get around like 50 to 60 CS at 10 minutes, but with Annie, it's very easy to out CS your opponent opponent and it's very easy to get ahead of them just by beating them in CS and because Annie you really shouldn't be missing a lot of CS on her you can easily get an advantage in the laning phase. She's also a great pick against assassins and right now after the assassin rework a lot of them are being played. She's a really good pick against someone like a Yasuo or a Katarina or a Zed because she can burst them down before they can really even get out of the stun from her ultimate. Those champions really can't try trade with her and it just makes her a great pick against them. She also is sort of a press R to win champion, kind of like Vi because if you can get that one good stun Tibbers off in a team fight with Annie, it doesn't even matter like if you're behind or if you're not doing too well. If you can hit one good stun Tibbers on the enemy AD carry or mid laner, it could change the momentum of the game or it could just end up winning your team the game. So my two honorable mentions for mid lane are going to be Heimerdinger and Malzahar. So Heimer might be a little bit of a surprise to you guys, but I'll explain why I think he is a great pick for lower elos. So in lower elos, people really won't know like how to play against Heimerdinger. He's a very good 1v2 champion due to his turrets. So a lot of the time, the jungler will try to gank Heimer in the early game when he's got his turret set up because he's going to be pushing like all the way into the enemy's tower and he's going to be getting like easy, easy autos off on the tower to get that first blood tower gold. So the enemy jungler is going to want to gank you, but he's going to come to gank and you're just going to end up getting a double kill and you're just going to snowball off of that really hard. Now Heimer is also, like I noted, one of the best like tower pushing mid laners. So it will allow you to snowball really hard, get that first turret blood or get that first turret uh, gold and just allow your team to get ahead in the early game. He does also actually have a pretty good Good team fight. If people don't focus your turret in a team fight, it's going to deal a load of damage. Your alt W can also pretty much like one shot a squishy target once you get AP on Heimer. So I do think he is definitely very underrated for the lower elos. Now for the build on Heimer, I wouldn't go for that ZZ Raw like banner build anymore on Heimer. Banner doesn't give any AP anymore and ZZ Rot also doesn't get give any AP. So I don't think that's the way you want to play Heimer, especially in lower elos, you want to just build like full AP Heimer and deal a lot of damage with him. 
And then as for Mausar, he's another one of those press R to win champions. A lot of people aren't going to build QSS in lower elos, and therefore, it's going to be very easy for you to just pick your target in a team fight with your ultimate. If you get ahead with him, and once you get to your Morello Rylai spike, you're going to deal a ton of damage. Now, Rylai is getting a nerf next patch, so this might affect Malzahar a little bit, but even though it is getting nerfed, I just feel like he is a great pick for lower elos because he's a very simple mid lane champion. His ultimate is very game changing and it's just very easy for him to lock down a priority target in a team fight with that ultimate. So taking a look at the 80 carries now, my number one pick is going to be Twitch. So right now, after Twitch did get buffed a few patches ago, he went from being a mediocre 80 carry to definitely being one of the best 80 carries for any elo. The buff to his W actually actually makes his laning phase pretty good now because it allows him to zone the enemies from CS when he does throw that W down. He's also one of the best, if not the best late game 80 carries right now. Once you do get max build as Twitch, you don't even need to like really know what you're doing on the champion because if you can just sit back in a team fight, pop your ultimate and get maybe like three or four auto attacks off, if you're getting those on a squishy target, then they're going to be dead. And because he's one of the only AD carries that can actually like assassinate the enemy high priority targets, I think he is definitely a very good pick. If the enemy uh, like mid laner ends up getting fed, but you're fed yourself and you do have a few items, then you can just use your range advantage with your ultimate. You can sit back and if you do get those autos off on them, even if they are fed, you're probably just going to kill them before they can even react to you. So my two honorable mentions for AD carry are going to be Misfortune and Jinx. So Jinx is very similar to Twitch in the sense that she is kind of like very easy to play once you do reach that late game. And late game, it does happen a lot of the time in the lower elos because throws do happen quite a bit. Late game full build Jinx is just really crazy and the amount of AoE damage you can deal like with your fish bones in team fights is really good. And then as for Misfortune, she is another one of those press R to win champions. Her ultimate is just super strong for team fighting, and as long as you can just line that up and hit a few targets in a team fight, then you're going to be you're going to do very well with the misfortune. And last but not least, to round out this video, if we take a look at support now, my number one pick is going to be Brand. So Brand is one of the best lane bully support champions, and he's just a really good pick for lower elos because people will tilt off the edge of the earth once you get a few like Ws off on them in the laning phase, or once you do end up poking them down. If you end up getting a kill in the laning phase as Brand, then the enemies are probably going to be like super tilted. They might even AFK. I know that when I'm playing against a brand, when I'm playing AD carry, I just feel like forfeiting like the laning phase because you really can't do too much against this champion unless you do have like a really good all-in support on your team or someone like a Blitzcrank that can try to get a hook on him. But if you don't have one of those champions, he's just going to poke you out and he's going to make the laning phase very hard for you. He can also build like full damage and you can actually carry as brand. You can deal a load of AoE damage in team fights with like your E, your W, and your ultimate. So in my opinion, he's a great pick for the lower elos. And then the two honorable mentions are going to be Scion and Zyra. So Scion is actually a very underrated support pick. He does have the highest win rate right now for any support in the game. He does have a very low pick rate though, so his win rate doesn't really give you the best idea of how strong he actually is, but he does have very good base damage, which will allow him to like go full tank and he can still deal a load of damage like in the laning phase. You can do this like kind of cheesy thing as Scion in lane, where you sit in the bush and once the enemies do walk like into your Q range, you can get a fully charged Q off on them and people really won't know or people won't know that you can do that in lower elo. So it will allow you to get a lot of CC off and a lot of damage in the laning phase. Your E max also allows you to deal quite a bit of damage because once you do get your E on the opponent, I'm pretty sure it shreds their armor and magic resist. So it will allow your AD carry to get a lot of damage off on them. 
And then as for Zyra, Zyra is very similar to Brand in the sense that she's one of the most annoying supports to play against in the laning phase. You're probably just going to end up tilting the enemy AD carry or support, and you're going to have a very easy laning phase as Zyra. If you are going up against someone like a Blitz or a Thresh, then definitely be careful in the laning phase because you don't want to get hooked. You are very squishy, and that is one of your like only weaknesses as Zyra. You can get bursted down very fast, but as long as you can play play it smart, and as long as you can get your poke off in the laning phase, then you can carry very hard with Syrah. So that is going to be all for this video, guys. If you did enjoy this video, then be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you guys have not already. So thanks for watching, guys. Have an awesome day, and I will see you in my next video.